This is Writer Life, a podcast about writing, life, coffee and conversation with Robin John Morgan. Hello and welcome to another episode of Writer Life. Today's topic, which is called the skin you're in, is probably a little bit um, different. But as you all know, I like to take what I see in life and I like to write many many different aspects of living today and life today and work them into all of the stories that i put out you know like like all writers i look at many aspects of the past the present and then i speculate about the future i tend to compare the views of yesteryear with today and i also consider what the future may hold for all of us and i really do believe that in what i see as a quest to make the things I write about as factual as possible. I do try to not leave any stone unturned. My stories have covered quite a wide range of topics such as apocalyptic events, natural life, religion and the power of the bonds between people, not just in love but also within the boundaries of deep friendships. But one topic that I kind of have skirted around is one of the most tiptoed through of all of them because to be honest as much as it baffles me i cannot really understand how we've reached a point in what is supposed to be a modern inclusive life for all and i've asked you know how on earth have we found a way to hate the skin that we live in it boggles my mind how did we end up in this place you know that that we're in today where we We talk and we teach the young about sex and sexuality, but we must never mention the subject of nudity. I'm reminded of a recent event where, as a part of an art class, there was a study of Michelangelo's David. Now that's a work of art that is absolutely beyond comparison when it comes to the pure skill of the way the marble was carved, you know, into this statue. And yet when referred to in a school as part of an ordinary everyday art lesson, absolutely all hell broke loose. And there was an outpouring of shock and moral outrage at the school because children saw a naked body. I cannot deny at the time, I just simply sat completely puzzled. And I had to ask the question, well, what actually is the problem here? You know, we've been looking at Michelangelo's David for years. And we've also been looking at like lots and lots of other famous paintings with naked people in them. And I don't deny it, I just simply do not get it. Everybody alive was born naked. And yet the very skin that we're born in has become a thing of disgrace and disgust. I mean, just think about that. As you're listening to my words, your body, that collection of tissue, skin and bones, without a covering, has become the vilest thing that the world knows of today. So much so, if you show it to anyone, you will send hordes of people screaming down the street. And of course, it goes without saying that if you put it on social media, you can pretty much bet your last bit within minutes you will see the image disappear and find a message in your inbox informing you that you just got a ban on posting. I mean, honestly, I really do not get it. What is this hysteria? And when did all of this begin? I think all of us need to really, you know, just take a moment and really think about the strange new concept that we have of life. Because... The other really weird aspect of all of this is it only applies to human beings. Everything else is completely safe as houses. And if you don't believe me, then just ask yourself this question. When was the last time you actually saw somebody point and scream, Oh my lord, look, there is a naked horse. Or someone hanging out of a window screaming at the trees, Quick, quick, do something. The birds have no clothes on, and the cat's forgotten to dress. I mean, (laughs) okay, so I'm being silly. But think about it. Am I? Am I really? 
You see, there is a, a serious point to all of this because as arrogant as we may think we are as a race or, you know, consider ourselves more intelligent than all of the other animals in the kingdom, the fact actually remains there is actually something a little silly about thinking our skin is so unsightly it should not be viewed, or at least some parts of it should not. No matter what we may think, we're all part of the animal kingdom. So, if it is okay to view an undressed cat without shame, why is it so insane to see an undressed person? I think Abigail states it very clearly in Abigail's Summer when she talks to Mary in the post office as she inquires about Birch, who is an absolutely unashamed naturist. Mary gave me a smile and she looked around to see if the shop was empty. Abigail, can I ask you something personal? Will that be all right? I suddenly felt very nervous. I suppose so. I mean, how personal? She looked round again. Your friend, you know, the white-haired girl. She told Madge she was a naturist. Is that right? I felt relieved. I mean, for a moment, I thought she was going to ask me if I was still a virgin. I nodded and smiled. Yeah, yeah, she is. She's called Birch. We spend a lot of time naked. It, it's good for the body, you know. And, and it's wonderful for the mind and inner happiness. Why? Is, is that a problem? She looked really surprised. You too? Are you too not embarrassed people know about it? I shook my head. Not at all. Mum and Dad are fine with it. And I've got a nice body. I mean, she has a gorgeous body. And we're both happy with how we look. I'm not ashamed or embarrassed at all. I understand not everyone gets it, Mrs. Saxon. But as Hattie always says to me, what others say about me says more about them than it ever will me. We're all born naked. Why would anyone be ashamed by that? We look the same. Just, well, you know, the proportions are a little different. That's all. She raised her eyebrows. I think you have a very positive attitude. Abigail, I must admit, I admire your confidence. I think the thing that I really love about this particular part of the book is that Abby voices her thoughts and in doing so actually states in a very common sense way how much she enjoys being naked and all of the benefits that come with it to Mary, who actually, as you find out in the book, is a closet naturist. Abby's openness and honesty is actually a huge surprise to the one person who has for many years gone on holiday to naked venues. I think, in a sense, this highlights kind of the, the craziness of being ashamed of a human body, but it also highlights some of the fear that actually exists within society, because somehow we've learned to fear being seen, and yet out there, especially in the UK, it is actually estimated to be around 7 million people who enjoy time naked. You know, simply for the relief and the freedom it brings them. And those are just actually the ones that we know about. There is still a great deal who hide their lifestyle out of this fear of shame. I can't deny it really fascinates me because when you actually start to do the maths... That makes naturists equal in number to vegetarians currently living in the UK. It's no small figure. It's actually higher than the numbers of most minority groups. And yet it appears that to the world, naturists should be hidden forever. I find it deeply intriguing. You know, it's, it's an aspect of modern life um, that absolutely fascinates me. And I also do know the hypocrisy of society in this matter. Think about this. A photograph of a naked statue caused moral outrage because it was shown to school children. And yet it's now a very, very common aspect of life to photograph aspects of your own nudity and then text it to someone else. Kids are doing this every day. And it's not just kids because most adults are at it too. And it has become so common, it has actually been normalized within society. 
A picture of what is seen as a sex organ is sent from one person to another without any embarrassment or concern at all. That little aspect of nudity and sharing is absolutely fine. And to a degree, so is porn. It's still the most viewed of all web pages on the internet, which actually, if you think about it, means most people are quite happy to sit in the comfort of their home and watch naked people be sexual. The moral outrage spouted at the school was because it was children in the art class. And that completely confused me at first because, as we all know, some of the greatest works of art ever created feature nudes. So, where is all this puritanical attitude coming from? I think the most obvious candidate would, of course, be the church. And yet, you know, they do have sex amongst them that shun nudity and consider it lewd and sinful. There's a good few moral and upstanding aspects within the Christian church. And again, you know, the same can also be noted that Islam absolutely frowns upon nudity and it sees it as an act so disgraceful and sinful those bearing their skin should be punished and cast into hell. I suppose that's all well and good, but one has to ask, especially with the rapid rise of sort of pagan religions of late and more people leaning towards a, a more spiritual path, can we really believe that the church still has so much influence that it could convince a massive majority of the population to actually hate their own skin? Because, you know, I for one, I'm not convinced. Especially when around the globe there are many Christian naturist groups who believe that Adam and Eve were created to live naked in Eden. And it was indeed God's will. Now, I can completely relate to that because considering if you are a Christian and, and, and that God did indeed create all things and he did not create clothing for any animal, and if you stretch back far enough in time to when the planet was much warmer than it is today, it makes complete sense that everybody lived naked. Birch actually points this out and adds a, a little bit of English law very beautifully in Abigail's summer as Marjorie tries to attack her verbally for being naked in the street. And Birch turns it completely around in an absolutely wonderful way. I'll tell the village that I stood naked on the road today, and I waved my mum goodbye. Birch lifted her head and looked at the crowd where Mary and Peter stood watching. She looked them straight in the eyes. I'm an naturist. Yes, I'm shameless and proud of it. It's not against the law to be naked. It's only illegal if it is lewd, offensive behaviour. And I do not think that waving goodbye to my mum is. She looked at Marjorie. Read that Bible you preach from. Your God's original design was two naked vegetarians living in a garden. Shame only began with the snake. I've always felt it was actually a pretty good point. Adam and Eve were living quite happily, and then the snake appeared, which does sort of hint at that they were completely at ease with their own nakedness before the apple of knowledge was bitten into. So maybe Birch has got a really good point here, as do some of the Christian naturists who believe nudity was never meant to be seen as wrong. I mean, to be honest, for pretty much most of our time on this planet, nudity has not been a cause of shame. I mean, if anything, it was seen as a natural act. The Celts would actually fight naked, which terrified the Roman legions. You know, the Romans endorsed communal bathing and would have long debates while bathing and relaxing together. During the Medi medieval period, it was absolutely quite normal to invite your friends over to bathe in groups, where they would then have their, their minstrels and servants present, and they would play music and serve food as the old disrobed and entered their baths with absolutely no embarrassment or shame at all. There was once actually a trend where most ladies of court would walk around with one of their breasts exposed. They would even apply rouge to their nipples to enhance their appearance. There are so many paintings of this. You know, and some of these are by some very, very famous artists because it was simply a very ordinary and commonplace thing to do at the time. So how did we arrive where we are today? 
Why is nudity not normalised? I would argue that in the modern world today, there's far more control over the people than there's ever been before. But I would also state that it's not actually a political thing or, you know, a thing of the state. It is, in fact, the symptom of very, you know, how very rapidly technology has grown and how it has been used to make more money than in the whole history of mankind. Most advertisers use semi models to sell products, as they say, sexy sells. And they have created this environment where nudity and sex have been bonded together in such a way that it has become almost impossible online to separate the two. I mean, to a degree, it's become the driving force of not just advertising, you know, but also film. Watch any movie and you'll see it more times than not. You know, it's going to include nudity, which in many cases does not even relate to the plot. It is there just for gratuitous purposes. Showing skin, showing skin is, is not only a draw for the paying crowds, it's also quite trendy and even stamped on as a feminist form of empowerment. You know, there are a good few actresses that wear see-through clothing on the red carpet to garner as much press attention as possible. I mean, that too is quite normalised and completely acceptable in the eyes of society today. Social media is actually filled with the latest news articles on who wore what and what could be seen. You know, it's like, is there underboob or a nipple showing through? It's ridiculous. But it's become top billing news that's actually read by millions. I mean, the fact that there could be a crisis in another country where lots of people die in a natural disaster becomes completely irrelevant because that actress has a lace see-through top on and her goods are on view. That's the top news of the day. Screw the masses of dying in an earthquake. This chick's hot and we have just got to see it. So again, I ask, why are we all ashamed of the skin that we are in? That is actually the problem. Hot, sexy actresses and famous people have the right kind of body. Viewing that is quite all right because, well, you know, it's considered to be appealing and sexy to look at. Normal people, well, no, not so much. That's seen as not at all sexy. The point here is a naked woman is a naked woman. Her fame should not be a factor. And in truth, actually it isn't. What is important and what most people miss is that we've all been conditioned to only appreciate a certain kind of body. The one that's been airbrushed to perfection in the latest modern culture magazine. Do you actually know what the perfect woman looks like? Because actually, I do. Because I decided to research and, and have a look at this. I, I mean, I do research many things in life for my books. But I actually looked it up and I found that on the internet there's actually a made-up image. It's kind of like a drawn cartoon sort of image. So, you know, listen to this, because <laughs> this is the perfect female image according to men. Scarlett Johansson's hair. Megan Fox's face. Kim Kardashian's breasts. Michelle Keegan's stomach. Kelly Brooks hips. And Rosie Huntingdon Whiteley's legs. There is a whole series of them. The perfect woman as seen by other women. Then as the Princess of Wales's hair, and actually it's got Emma Watson's hips. And they have the very, very same thing also for men, with Brad Pitt's hair and David Beckham's face. So, you know, imagine this. What young girl or young boy can honestly live up to these standards? I mean, let's really be honest here. No one can. They're a fantasy. And yet they're the new standard set for all. And this has been peddled by social media and the mass market media. And it's garnered mainstream acceptance across the whole of the so-called civilized West. But, but they're absolutely impossible standards. And yet these have become the benchmark that all of us are absolutely expected to live up to. 
And if we do not, well then, you know, there's a product to change that. It could be a cream, a hair conditioner, a form of makeup, or even a new fad diet. And that actually is the crux that catches everybody out. Hating your body is good for business. And the media has worked very hard for many years to make sure that you hate yourself so much you constantly spend money fixing it. They know already that nobody can do it. And so for them, it's guaranteed. The money will keep pouring in as the product lines grow bigger and more expensive as they push people to their limit as they fight for acceptance, validation and appreciation. I mean, basically, it's another way of parting your cash and lining their pockets. And the only thing that can utterly defeat them is actually body acceptance. Love the skin you're in and suddenly you're immune to their adverts and your money is safe. Just think about that for a moment. In Hans Cottage, Emily strips off in front of Shelley and dives into the lake. Shelley's pretty surprised because she does not understand that for Emily as a child, Han normalized it. So for Emily, this is a completely natural thing to do. It's just part of the way her life has always been. In the book, the passage reads, I turned in the water and swam back towards the jetty. I heard a splash behind me as she followed to the ladder. I climbed up and out of the water and shook my head. All the water splashed everywhere. I felt alive and tingling all over. It felt good and I could hear Han in my thoughts as she laughed at me with happiness from all of those times that we swam together in the past. I grabbed one of the blankets and pulled it around me. I felt amazingly good. Shelley came shivering down the jetty and grabbed the second blanket. I noticed her soaking wet knickers as I picked up mine. Wuss, what are you worried about? I've always skinny dipped here. Something that should really, really be considered is that if we were to normalize nudity within society, businesses would lose billions of pounds overnight. A great deal of them would literally cease trading. I mean, look at the fashion industry, which is literally a billions of pounds industry, knocking out cheap, affordable clothing, which is made overseas by cheap labor, usually child labor, and by people who are being exploited. And the clothing has absolutely been designed to have a very limited life. So it usually rips or tears after a few wearings and you simply bin it and buy a new thing. The shops always appear to be having a sale. Have you noticed that? You know, it's, it, it always appears, it's, it seems like it's every month. There are big red posters advertising 70% off and everything must go. So people panic and they rush to the shop to spend even more money on cheap clothing before all of it sells out. The week after, the shop then changes the store completely around and advertises new lines for the next season. And once again, the clothing junkies in their hundreds swarm to the shop to get the latest fashion. It has actually been studied by social psychologists who have found that it stimulates the brain in the same chemical regions as cocaine. People have actually been groomed to become addicted to new clothes. I mean, it boggles the brains. Can you imagine, if you live a naked life, how little you would even care about these shops? They literally would have no power over you at all. And that would spell disaster for fashion which I will also add is also the second biggest polluter on the planet. One of the most significant aspects of the Curio Chronicles is shame and victimization. And society is absolutely riddled with it today. Most of this is born out of envy or greed. And once again, as a society, we've all been programmed to react to it. And so when you consider advertising, you realize the power that they've actually got over people. An advert is literally a subtle insult. I mean, you know, 
just watch carefully just sit back and pay attention because what they do is actually insult your intelligence and then they plant an idea and it's it's like almost a subliminal process do you want soft flowing shiny hair use this product what that actually means is you've got the hair quality of a thatched cottage and you look horrendous in the eyes of society so you better buy this remove those unsightly blemishes with cream yeah that means you're way too ugly to be seen as attractive with those spots so here pay us tons of money for this cream that won't really work but for a day or two you will feel bloody wonderful it goes on and on subtle insult after subtle insult and it's on billboards tv adverts in newspapers and magazines and even in videos on video streaming platforms like this one you will even find it in the suggested feed on your social media which is crammed packed with this stuff we get something like 10 billion adverts a day bombarding at us and all of them are aimed at making us feel so bad we spend money and all of them also make you want to hide your body and be completely ashamed of it when you look at the way it kind of appears immoral you know the way they do it and it's pretty underrounded and yet again you know it's become an absolutely accepted part of life and nobody nobody bats an eyelid we've been taught and conditioned to hate ourselves because we've been slowly persuaded through media and advertising to hate small aspects of our bodies and so over time we find this part or that part of our own skin shameful and eventually the sheer thought of being naked in front of someone terrifies the lights out of us and we react in horror at the thought of someone seeing our own skin you know there's so many relationships where one or the other won't undress unless the lights are turned off that's the effect of what is happening to us why are we allowing the corporate companies and the media to have so much control over our thoughts and feelings and why are we becoming skin phobic the negative side of all this manifests itself in many many ways such as eating disorders low self-esteem plastic surgery body dysmorphia anxiety and depression creating mass body negativity throughout the whole of society and yet the cash rolls in as people in sheer desperation try absolutely everything at a great cost to them to try and find some form of happiness in order to get through the week it appears criminal because if you think deeply enough society has become the victim of this low and deceitful way big business chooses to sell products it is yet another con man knocking at the door playing on all of your weaknesses and you do not even realize it when you love the skin you're in your body negativity disappears crazy as it sounds nudity actually is massively useful at curing anxiety and lessening depression because you know being naked allowing the light on your skin allowing the air around your skin makes you feel happier more fulfilled and it enhances your whole persona not just that you also feel freer and more light-hearted and your whole attitude towards life becomes far more positive loving your body is a really good thing because it enhances your own acceptance in the Curio Chronicles first book, Abigail Summer, I present the full scenario of life today related to the naked human form. You know, there is Birch, a naturist who is fully accepting. You've got Abby, who is aware of the village and their reaction and their hatred. And then, of course, there is Marjorie, who stands in judgment of just about everyone in the village. In the book, Birch walks her mum to the car and waves her goodbye. 
but she's completely naked and at ease with her own body. As is her mother, who, you know, for her, it's just quite normal seeing her daughter naked. But the problem is, Birch is in the middle of the street. Ronnie drove off and Birch watched her leave. I stood in the hall behind the front door, peering around it. Birch! For God's sake! What the hell are you doing? Didn't you hear me calling? She turned and frowned. What? She walked through the gates. Birch, you're stood on the road in broad daylight, and you're naked! I waved at a hurry, and she looked down, and then back at me, and she shrugged. So what? I gave an exasperated gasp. She was never going to fully understand the workings of this village. She had a handicap. She was Birch. I was not sure they were ever going to get used to it. In the vicarage, Marjorie gasped into her phone as Mrs. Perkins reported what she was seeing out on the road. She is what? Never in all her life has she heard anything so shocking. That has it. She has no shame at all. I cannot believe I would say it, but she is worse than Harriet Barker. It's a, it's a wonder, it's a wonderful, wonderful piece. Abby is frightened because she's controlled and oppressed by the village. It's like Birch is actually quite relaxed, and Marjorie immediately sexualizes the nudity in order to make it more sensational, and then she can weaponize it so she can use it to try and control Birch with shame. This is the modern dynamic and it's a perfect example of how life today has evolved due to the media and its policies of sexualizing and shaming the skin that we are in. In most of my books, I normalize nudity in many ways. I never use it in a sexual sense. I make it such an ordinary thing that people do not at first realize what they have just read. And I do it because I know and understand how important it is to be fully accepting of your natural form. I've worked with young people who absolutely hate themselves and they want to change their looks or harm themselves because they believe everything that's pumped out of the media. And no matter how hard they try, they can never reach what are seen as the modern standards of beauty. You know, it can be really, really heartbreaking to see someone with so much to offer hate themselves so much they've sliced chunks of themselves off and have scarred all of their body. I've seen that too many times. I have seen the effects firsthand as I live with my wife who is a recovered victim of an eating disorder. And I watched my daughter suffer because the kids at school told her she was too fat, when actually in truth, she's very slender like just about all of my family have been in the past. The bullies were so intense, she could not see how slender she actually was. And yes, you know, she believed those vindictive children, who were actually four times bigger than her. And for a short while, she started to starve herself. You know, I'm a dad. I cannot put into words the pain I felt trying to get her through that. And yet, this is acceptable to do that in society every day. You know, especially if you're a multinational business or a media outlet. I have absolutely no issues with nudity. And I don't really understand how we've allowed 90% of society to believe the skin of a human is ugly and unsightly. So much so, one must always react with shock and offence and shriek with disbelief if they see it. You know, Abby does say it perfectly. We all have the same bits. The only difference is the proportions are different. We live in a world where we're told we must be inclusive. We must accept all of the sexualities, all genders, all races, all religions and all backgrounds. There can be no room for discrimination, and all of us must be treated equally in a tolerant society. And in most cases, we do, if they are dressed. 
In Heirs to the Kingdom, Rinstan, who is the personification of nature in a human form, wakes under the trees where she spent the night making love under the blankets. She slips naked out of the cover and runs down the mere naked, where she swims and washes herself. In the Curio Chronicles, Birch lies in the garden sunbathing naked as Abby panics as she discovers that the vicar is en route. And yet Birch is not in the slightest bit bothered as Abby has a complete and total meltdown. In Hans Cottage, Emily skinny dips in the lake on a blisteringly hot day to cool down. And in Rise of the Raven, Branner and Ariel bathe naked in the river to wash together. In the Countess of Darkness, Morgana is initiated into a sacred ritual where she stands naked in a sacred circle. I don't care who says what, be them a company, a church, a radio station, a newspaper, whatever. You'll never convince me nudity is shameful, because it's not. It is actually who we are. It is the skin that we are in. And when we accept the human form for what it actually is, we find joy, we find inner peace, and a sense of freedom and liberty that is unrivaled. It is the person we were born to be, and there's nothing wrong or shameful in being truly accepting of that, regardless of what those who seek to gain money from you within society may say. Nudity is not sexual. It only becomes sexual when you want it to be. And for the rest of the time, it is just you being normal. And that is what I write about. Being you. Being normal. And enjoying the life that you live. You know, there is just too much shame in society today. There's too much finger pointing and name calling. And there are far too many who feel they have the right to dictate the terms of your body and your feelings about it for the sake of extra profit. No one's body should be manipulated for sale to the highest bidder. And if you embrace the skin that you are in, then you're the one in control of not just your body, but also your own mind. And that is the very reason I normalize nudity in every single book that I write, so that every reader understands that, and overcomes the fear of themselves and how they look. And for as long as I write, it will be a feature, even if it's only a small one, you know, just to make sure that the people who pick up my books understand that being yourself and accepting the skin that you're in is fine no matter what others may say. That was a good one, and I really enjoyed putting that one together, because this is actually something I passionately believe in, and it's, you know, I don't just write it, I've lived it. You know, I've done a couple of World Naked Bike Rides, and it was absolutely brilliant fun. And if you've never done one, honestly, you should try it. It is the most amazing thing ever. Thank you to everybody who's tuned in and is listening to this podcast. I massively appreciate it. Um, Again, if you've really enjoyed this one, please, you know, put a like on the video. And if you've not subscribed already, I would really appreciate it if you did, because that will get up my numbers. I mean, the podcast has not been going for a huge amount of time. And so building it up and getting the viral reach is massively important. Once again, I will say thank you. I will be back next week and I will find something equally as bizarre or interesting about reading or writing or life to talk about. And so I will see you then. Thanks for listening to the Writer Life podcast. If you have enjoyed this episode or there are areas of Robin's stories you would like him to discuss, please add your thoughts and questions in the comments and we will include them in a future episode. You can follow Robin on all his social media links, which you will find listed below. And please, like and subscribe to this channel, so you get the latest notifications when he posts. All Robin's books are available in digital and print formats to purchase or download through all online book sales sites.